at AIA Australia. We're making healthy living easier by incentivising your clients with rewards. Like discounts on their gym memberships, eligible flights and insurance premiums with AIA Vitality. It's no wonder that we've reduced client lapse rates by 50% and helped grow client engagement. To find out more, contact your AIA CDM today. Horizons, which sort of transitions you know, people that don't really know a lot about advice into uh, people that know a little bit more than not a lot. And um, and something that uh, Jade and I was speaking about a little while ago over some beers was his unique take and experiences on outsourcing. And so that's something that a lot of people have done. Um, I myself have hired sort of several people uh, at different capacities. Um, without a lot of success, um, I know Ben's done it. Uh, I know a lot of people have, have, have done it. I know a lot of people who have run companies out of outsourcing. Um, Jade had some pretty unique insight. So, um, yeah, so, mate, I just want to guess, before we get to all that, you're like an ex-rock star. Can you talk a <laughs> second about that? Oh, geez, this is my life well and truly before finance. But yeah, in, in my, uh, I guess, early 20s, I spent a lot of time uh, as a touring musician uh, playing bass in an indie rock band and living the dream. It was great, carefree, uh, touring the Eastern States. Yeah, it was fantastic. Seems a world away from where we are today. Yes, indeed, indeed. Now, um, and then from there, you jumped into uh, direct insurance with AMP. Is that correct? Yeah, so I um, always knew I was going to end up back in the well, in the finance world, um, and so I got my foot in the door whilst I was finishing some study with AMP working out of their direct office. So we were dealing with clients uh, directly over the phone with you know, self serve insurance, superannuation, and even to some degree TTR. I don't know how they got away with doing that, but um, <laughs> yeah, so I did that for about. Uh, Oh, it about 18 months or so before I, I moved over to Horizons where we met, which was uh, probably the best thing I could have done, I think, for my career at that stage. Yeah, it was, it was very helpful. I, I can definitely um, back that up. So after, after we spent a year in Horizons, you moved down to, um, to Adelaide to essentially mm -hmm. sort of take over your dad's um, successful and um, you call it long-standing business. Yes. So as a part of your goal of bringing your advice practice into the, the 21st century or however you want to put this new world of advice, um, a part of that has been outsourcing. Can you talk us a little bit about some of the things that you're trying to bring in that was different, say, from your dad's strategy, and then we'll yeah. get into how the outsourcing fits in. Okay, well, yeah, I'm going to be, so after I left Horizons, I moved, obviously, as, as you said, back to Adelaide, and I spent a few years sort of doing the same kind of work as we were doing in Horizons, working with some more low-touch clients, building, building the, the book business. Um, two years ago, I officially I bought the business, so my, my father had had it for 30 odd years. It had been, you know, quite heavily involved with a lot of corporate super, um, you know, areas like that, a lot of personal investment clients. He had to sell that back to Hill Ross and I purchased the majority of the book back, uh, but mainly focusing on our, our full service clients that we had strong relationships with uh, and also, you know, a, a number of our insurance clients, but we sort of carved off the corporate super part of the business at that stage. Um, and, yeah, I guess so that was nearly two years ago now and it's been – quite a journey from being a, I guess, an employed advisor into being somebody responsible for running staff, uh, improving business efficiencies, the processes that we're using. So I guess, you know, a business that's been around for 30 years is quite set in its ways with how it has historically done things. Yeah. I have, did have some challenges with some long-standing staff that were, you know, whilst they were very good at what they did, weren't necessarily too impressed with wanting to learn new ways of doing things or adjust what they were doing, especially uh, at the instructions of a, of a young buck that's just come into the business. Um, so that that uh, had its own unique challenges in itself. But um, so I guess you know we're we're all in the same boat. We're all trying to get more efficiencies for the same time in the office. Do more with what we've got. One of, and uh, I guess for me. At the same time that I took over the business, I was in the fortunate position that uh, also had a relationship with uh, quite an innovative uh, accounting group here in Adelaide. 
um, and we formed a joint venture business, I guess, in light of some of the changes that were coming about with uh, well, the accountings, accountants providing financial advice to have an integrated in-house offering for them. Yep. And fortunately for me, um, they already had, um, had several forays into the offshoring uh, world um, and they'd done a, quite a bit of trial and error in their own right uh, but had settled on a model that was working really well for them so fortunately for me I didn't have to sort of learn too many of the pitfalls on my own time uh, and was able to sort of get into something that was working quite well from the get-go um, so they had trialed um, staff over in India Mm-hmm. Uh, and had spent you know a good few years trying to get a get that system up and running. I think there was quite a few cultural issues that they did have with with the, just the, you know, the differences between India and Australia that had posed some challenges. And for them, they'd found that uh, I guess the Philippines having such a, a good grasp of English uh, and sort of a, a little bit more of a you know for lack of a better word westernised um, background yep. uh, was a really good fit. Um, so I've just simply leveraged off what they were doing well and tried to apply it to my own business. And uh, yeah, I before before sort of taking the plunge to do it because it is a you know a reasonable mind sh- mindset shift to think all right, well traditionally I've always just had people in my office where I can walk over to them, say good day, and ask them to come back to me on some things. Like, There's somebody I don't know who is not in my office. So I went over with Chris, who's one of the directors of the accounting business, to see how it all worked firsthand. I think that's really important. Um, so we went over to Manila, um, visited the offices, met with the guys that run the whole show over there to get an understanding of what their recruitment process is like. Importantly, and this is one, was one of the big things for me. I needed to feel comfortable uh, that the security and the, you know, the data um, security over there was going to be up to scratch before I feel comfortable with somebody else having access to our client info. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, yeah, after after visiting there and being quite impressed with how their their offices were run um, and the you know, the screening that they put their their staff through, which includes you know having you know, a variety of Australian recognised qualifications as well. So these these aren't the people we're dealing with. They're not people who have never don't know what a super fund is, or you know, yeah, they're the guys that at least as a bare minimum got RG one four six compliance. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, so we worked, I started with one staff member, Evelyn, and uh, at the moment we've only got two there at the moment. Uh, but you know, it, I think that is going to be definitely an area of growth for our business, while which actually, strangely enough, allows us to have the capacity to employ more people here in Australia as well. So it hasn't sort of been a, a case of building a team offshore at the expense of jobs and stuff here in Australia. The, the two are not mutually exclusive. They've allowed us to kind of build the capacity by using people offshore. And then because of that extra capacity, we can now employ more people locally as well. So it's, yeah, I find it a real win-win. Awesome. So um, I just want to dive into that, that functionality. So, so you flew over, you met with the team. Um, it, was that the limit of it or did you, did, was, there, was there any other relationship building? Well, I, I guess as I was saying, our situation was a bit different in that. So Chris and we, who are the two directors of the accounting group, they have 10 staff there already. Mm. So, and they had been running that for about 18 months or so before I got involved. Right. So it was just, at that stage, it was more for me, let's have a look at what's working really well for them. Why is that different from what they've done previously? Um, you know, I, I trust the other directors there, they're, they're input, uh, you know, they're both quite savvy guys in their own right. Um, and uh, yeah, so we just, we got to know yeah, how, how do you set it up? What, what, from a compliance point of view, what do we need to consider to make sure that we're meeting all of our compliance obligations? You know, and that that extends to not only just the data security, but how you're communicating with your staff uh, in other countries. So, you know, for example, what we any client information is stored locally on our server, and we have, they they all have remote access to our server that has to go through Australia. So we're not emailing back and forth any client documents that could uh, you know could, could get intercepted. Um, anything relating to client info is still stored on our servers back in Australia, and they just have access to it. So yeah, it was just fine tuning how we're we going to set everything up so that we're um, meeting all of our 
compliance obligations from day one, essentially. And how did you train your staff? Okay, well, I guess for me, Evelyn, who I employed, you know, I, 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 the, the first interview process, so I had a, had a Skype interview that the guys in, in Manila arranged for me. So we had um, five, I think it was five candidates or so to choose from to start with, of varying ages and experiences. And as my, for my first staff member, I just went for the person who was the most experienced in dealing with the, the variety of things that we might need, need to use. So, you know, uh, Evelyn, her background was that she'd been working uh, for Western banks in the Philippines for a very long time, doing a lot of um, economic reports for them, uh, client communication. So she, and as well as her immediate role prior to working with me was as a power planner over there as well. So she was familiar with X plan, even though we, we didn't use that in our office, so we don't at the moment. Sure. She was familiar with, with the types of software we'd be using, the format for statements and advice. And, uh, you know, so when I settled that uh, she was the one, we, we gave them the nod. Um, so the way that it kind of works in our arrangement is that we, we deal directly with the, with the group in the Philippines. They're, the group that we choose to use are called MAPTA. They're run by an Australian guy, Tim Vorbach, over there. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we deal with them, they find the staff, we, we pay them the, the fee to, 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 for the staff salaries, but technically they're employed in the Philippines by AMAPTA. Right. What's the, what was the name of that, Sorry. What was the name of that Jay? The What's value the in that, well, oh, the name, um, AMAPTA, E-M-A-P-T-A, AMAPTA. And what kind of yeah. work do you get them to do? Well, so initially there was, there was more compliance issues from our point of view for doing power planning and more detailed work. Um, so Evelyn has just been essentially um, a client services officer. Okay. So she will do, you know, for summer I'll have a meeting with a client and they want a withdrawal. I'll just jump on um, Skype Evelyn. Um, hey, this client needs this money out by X time. Can you please um, arrange that to happen and, and log the file notes? and they, they take care of it all. So it's essentially like having a virtual assistant or a client services officer, um, you know, if we need portfolio rebalances, um, she sends us the, uh, the work to check before she pushes the buttons, but then she will, she'll implement some of those changes. So a lot of the, the back-end time-consuming things, but still, still areas that carry, you know, a, a large amount of trust as well. Definitely, yeah. So she's got access to um, to the platforms and logins yeah. and everything like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she does. And uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have done that if I wasn't very comfortable with the integrity of the people that they were hiring. So that's why you flew over just to make sure. Yeah. Okay, so it was less about you know taking a stab in the dark, so to speak, and more yeah. about using using an a team that was. That you or experienced in what we wanted to do, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then we, we had to then, I had to satisfy myself that I was comfortable with the, the quality of work that they do. And look, it's, it's not something that you, it's, it's perfect from day one. Yep. Um, what, we've, what we've done since, since I hired Evelyn, I go over each year um, around Christmas time, we, we take all, essentially, we treat the staff, or Chris and we, the other directors of the accounting group, and we're all, our teams are in the same little office space, so they, they all know each other, which is great right. also from an efficiency point of view, because if I need to know things about our mutual clients, they can just talk to each other and just sort it out in the one yeah, office, which great. is fantastic. At yeah. basically no cost to the accounting group either. Um, yeah. So they don't have their full accountants sitting there tracking down, you know, self-managed fund statements or whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, but so we, we fly over there each year and do ongoing training. But what I found was really good, I didn't know we could actually do this at the time that I hired Evelyn, but Amapta also organise uh, visas for her to come over to Australia and work in our office for a period of time. So we flew Evelyn over after she'd been with us for about six or seven months and she spent uh, six weeks working from our office as, as in, you know, just as a, she's the same as any of our other staff. She just happens to be located in a different country. Wow, that's, that's see, that's, I've never heard of, of that happening before. So that's, that's very unique. So she yeah. came over um, and yeah. enjoyed sort of getting to know everyone, but also you were able to instill in her not only the values, um, but, you know, the, the systems and how you, how yeah. you do work rather than everything <laughs> in Skype. And yeah. 
he works in an office with a bunch of other people that are associated with your business. So it's really like a secondary um, office space. That's just, and it's an extension of your office rather than someone being a working for you on the other side of the world. Yeah, we, we didn't want it to feel like a little um, somebody isolated on the other side of the world is just sort of tapping into what we're doing. They yeah. are a valued part of our team and every bit as important as any one of our other staff members. Um, so I think where some people can go wrong when you're dealing with offshore staff is that they, I guess they just think they're going to be self-sufficient, ready to roll from day one. Here you go, here's the work, start doing it. But I think there really needs to be a big focus on context and why rather than just, I mean, they're clever enough to, you know, they're well educated in, in Australian financial services um, areas, but yeah. if they don't understand why this certain thing that they're doing is important or how that's relevant to other things that you might be doing for them, it really can fall down. So uh, that's why I think it's, it's really important to, to from a team uh, cohesion point of view to have Evelyn come over periodically, work from our office. Build, it's a bit of a team building thing as well, but then she can see how what she's doing, into it, how her cog in the wheel fits in with everything else that we're doing and why it's important. And that's, the, I think, a really big, a really big uh, point of uh, difference, I think, for us. Yeah. And Jane, if I can just jump in for a sec. The, um, how do you guys, because you mentioned security a couple of times, how yeah. do you how do you manage security in that office and what sort of, you know, procedures do you use to ensure that uh, that, that level of security that you want to maintain? Okay, so I mean, we, we've got our uh, dedicated IT team here in Adelaide that we work with who actually works very closely with the IT security team uh, in the Philippines at the Mapta. They, as you could imagine, have extremely rigorous processes that they have to apply to because the last thing they're going to want is any form of data security issue because it would just essentially destroy all trust uh, in, in that operation. So they're, they're extremely tight on it from their end. So we've got a number of different firewalls and various email screening uh, systems that we use, which can sometimes be frustrating because sometimes you get things that you don't want to have caught up in the firewall and get, get stuck there. But um, it's not the kind of area you want to take chances with. But So we, we just make sure that no, we have an office-wide policy that there's no, no emails or other forms of communication with client-sensitive info. It's all stored locally. The only way for, for the people in, in, in for our staff in uh, Manila, for Evelyn and now Oliver to access that info is through our server. Um, or, and everything is monitored through our email system as well to see who's sending what. So we can keep tabs on if any staff members have, have breached that or not. But we, we're very tight on that. That's, that's extremely important. So does it actually restrict them from being able to send sensitive information somewhere else or, or is it just that everything is tracked and then you can then audit what's actually been happening? Look, I don't, I, I'm not sure offhand whether it actually physically stops the, the sending. I, I, I believe that um, on the Philippines side that they've only got certain emails that they're able to, certain email addresses that they're able to send to from their end. But as I said, all of our client stuff isn't really dealt with on emails through our server anyway. Um, but yeah, they're, 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 all of their um, emails and, and communication is very closely monitored on their end. I mean, we've gone to the point of where you, to get into that building, you've got to go through a metal detector. You can't bring in a mobile phone, USB drives. The computers don't have uh, USB drives. Um, you know, it's, it's about 10 times the level of security of any financial services. Uh, you know, office you find here in Australia. Mm. Um, but it really has to be for them because, you know, the, the, they just can't afford any reputational damage by having any, any, any issues like that. So I, I fully understand and support it. Okay. That makes sense. I think that's something that a lot of people look at, you know, when they, they think about this off, offshoring, but it, it can put a lot of people off because obviously with the yeah. sort of information that we you, we have access to that, you know, we get up to a fair bit of mischief, but... Uh, like I think also just reviewing your own, and this is what we're, we're sort of reviewing this at the moment ourselves, just making sure that your professional indemnity insurance cover is, is up to scratch and, and uh, that there is third-party PI cover in place with, with the providers you deal with. I know that we're working with them that to review that at the moment and, and as well as our own. So, uh, yeah, look, I, I wouldn't be... Um, if I wasn't comfortable with the recruitment process and the integrity and uh, the security over there, I just wouldn't wouldn't do it. 
but uh, I think yeah, from my, my observations and the previous experience from the accounting group that have you know, they've got hundreds and hundreds of clients that are using services over there, um, there's been zero issues for us. All right. Um, well, mate, you, you've sort of dobbed us in because uh, Jackie, who works for us over in the Philippines, <laughs> uh, texting me saying, hey, wink, wink, yeah, you can send me to Australia for Christmas. So cheers for that, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, more importantly, Clay, you can uh, have a nice little tax deductible business trip over to the Philippines. Ah, it's all right. <laughs> touche, touche. <laughs> Um, um, okay, well, we, we've probably got another, you know, uh, nine minutes up our sleeve. Uh, I know you're very busy, Jade. You've got a, a meeting to, to go into. Um, so I guess at this stage, we'd like to maybe take some questions from the group. Uh, we've got yeah, one, sure. Mark. Um, and does Evelyn work for you exclusively full time or does she serve other firms? She's exclusively our staff member full time. Right. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to deal with with staff members doing multiple working for multiple practices. I think I, I need that the full attention of that person with our clients and our business. So um, that's that, that's really important um, for us. And Jay, do, do you do you do the full management of of Evelyn, or do, do, is there a management team in the office over there that provides some you know basic support as well? Yes, they do. They've got full. We've got a tiered management structure over there. So there's somebody that um, reports to me on, you know, if she's had a sick day or if there's, you know, issues with in running a fire drill in the office or whatever the case may be. We have regular performance reporting. They they re request from us to make sure that uh, we're happy with the, with the caliber of the work that's being produced and and uh, what, what's happening over there, so they can improve their training and and, and processes as well. So. You yeah, I, I usually, for anything, I guess, management-related, I've got a dedicated um, person over there that I deal with who oversees my staff. Sure. Okay. And how do you guys, how do you communicate typically on a, you know, day-to-day -day basis when you're working with the staff? Do you use any particular technology or, you know, how do you run that? Uh, I well, we use Skype quite a bit. I mean, I, I have to admit, I'm not probably the most tech savvy uh, person out there, but I find Skype works really well for us. So we we have our uh, quite frequently have Monday morning meetings where we look at what's on the go in the office for the for the coming week, and uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll patch our staff in the Philippines to that so they can participate and. Uh, Again, it's all about feeling included in the team and the business that they're working in. So they're, they're, you know, they're, they're invested in, in what they're doing in our business. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I just got a, a follow-up question from Mark here as well, just asking about the cost of the service. Well, I guess the, the cost will vary depending on what type of work you want that person to be able to do, their level of experience and number of years doing that kind of role. I think from, from memory, our, our full-time staff over there probably costs us somewhere in the vicinity of thirty-three to 35000 Aussie dollars uh, per year right. in, that, in that order. But, um, you know, it, it, it will vary. I've heard of other people paying, you know, twenty-five, twenty-seven thousand 27000 for their staff. It, it just depends on um, the organisation and the, the previous experience, I'd suggest. Yeah, I'd suggest probably a lot of that would be the office that, that they're yeah. in and all the, the safety measures, the management that's involved. Um, yeah, could be being as sensitive as the data is. Yeah, they, they, I mean, they, they've got a lot of overhead. So they, they've run a, you know, there's a lot of Australian and other country businesses operating from a map. To, and this, um, I can only speak from experience of the group that we're using. Um, so they do have a lot of overhead. So they've got their, their set fee to provide the recruitment, the, the management of your staff there, all of the facilities. You know, if there's extra things that they need, like we might need a computer upgrade or a, a new printer or whatever, um, they, will, they, they, tend, they um, tend to just charge that at a cost price to us on our invoices. And they're not trying to mark that up. Um, we can opt to pay in Aussie dollars or, they're, they're, or US dollars. So uh, I tend to pay in US dollars depending on the exchange rate because we, you know, they, they, they will have, probably have a slight margin in there. So I choose to do it that way. Sure. Um, yeah. Okay. And Jay, did, did you have any uh, 
did you make any mistakes when you first got started? Like if you were going back again, is there anything that stands out that, you know, you would do differently or, or better to make it work easier if you were to, to start this again? Um, well, I guess I don't think there's too much that I'd change at this stage. I mean, we're only still 18 months in, so we're, st we're still learning and refining what we're doing as well. I won't profess to be, look, I'm not the oracle of offshore staffing and know it all, but I was in the fortunate position of being able to leverage off other people that had already had some, you know, trial and error with other arrangements. So I was able to sort of get off to, a, get, start using that service on, on the right foot, I think. So I think as long as you sort of look at what you're required to do from your licensee compliance point of view, uh, engage the relevant stakeholders and, uh, you know, essentially follow, ensure your compliance is tight and that you've got good uh, good staff members, you're happy with the recruiting and uh, you're clear on what you want them to do. I think it's, it can be a really successful uh, recipe for helping to grow the capacity of your business with hopefully not overburdening your, your practice with, um, you know, with, with added cost to, to a large extent. Sure. And if someone was thinking about going down this path, would you know, would you say that there's some uh, anything that they need to, to do, apart from what you've just mentioned, of course, but... Um, I'd get over there. <laughs> get over there and see it for yourself. Be satisfied that you understand the way that it works over there, because it is different to Australia, um, and that you're comfortable with the people running any of the outsourcing uh, or offshoring arrangements that you're considering. It. Know them, know who you need to go to if there's any issues, but importantly, I'd really encourage you to get over there um, see how it all works for yourself. That was a real eye-opener for me. And as I said, if I wasn't comfortable with it when I went there, I would definitely not have done it. Um, but I'm very glad that I did. Awesome, man. And just to uh, wrap up, just got one quick question here from Leon. Yeah. Um, do you, is there disclosure issues? Are you got to tell your uh, clients that things are being outsourced or in the yeah we, we, no we do that on our yeah we do that on our client acknowledgement forms and it's in our um, FSCG. Okay. So, yeah, we, we make sure that, uh, and I, I let them know that we have got staff that are operating uh, from Manila um, yep. and that they're responsible for implementing some of the work we do uh, and we'll have access to the info, but they're, they're part of our team. I haven't had anyone have any issues with it. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, mate, thank you very, 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 very much for your time, brother. Um, no problems. We'll, um, we'll jam out as, our, as us former rock stars generally <laughs> on the weekend in our underwear. Um, <laughs> uh, tonight, um, for everyone, we have the XY um, social event on at CBD in Melbourne. Um, thank you very much to uh, Midwinter and Centuria for that. And uh, we will see you here again, 12 o'clock Sydney time next week on Thursday. And um, have a really good week. Thanks for having me, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.